Good morning. Good morning. And welcome home to the First Congregational Church of Rockport on this beautiful sunny day in Rockport, this day that we celebrate all the mothers in our lives and all the people who have mothered us in our community and throughout each and every one of our lives. People of God, no matter who you are, no matter where you find yourself on your walk of faith, your life's journey, we hope you will consider this your home. Whether for the next hour or for a lifetime in this congregation, our doors and our windows, our lives streaming, and our hearts are always open to welcome you home again and again and again. No matter who you are, you are welcome here in God's house. Here in this congregation and in this community, we are very aware that we live on the lands and the waters that surround us that have been stewarded by the Algonquin and by the Pawtucket and Algonquin tribes for thousands of years. And we pray that we continue their good work with them to be good stewards of this land on Cape Ann and the water that surrounds us. Friends, thank you for joining us this day. I invite you all to stand in body or spirit and join me in the call to worship, which you can find printed in your bulletin. Mother God, bearer of creation. Mother God, lover of creation. Mother God, guardian of creation, that all may dwell in love and peace. And I invite you to open your hymnals to hymn number 467 in the red hymnal, I'm the black hymnal. And we ask you to mask while you are singing and let us join together to sing, Mothering God, You Gave Me Birth. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. God, our shepherd, restorer of our souls, the one who calls us to nap in green pastures, we enter into this moment of worshipful gathering, trusting that you will guide us along the paths of righteousness. Wherever we may be in this world, let us know the comforting presence of your rod and staff. 
We are expectant, O oh God, that our fears will fade, that our cups will overflow, and that your goodness and mercy will accompany us in this hour and beyond. Now, let us worship you in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Mother's Day, right? Mothering is hard in all its many forms. We all know that. It takes patience. It takes know-how when we don't really have it. It takes physical strength, psychological shenanigans. It's just overwhelming at times. And also childing is difficult. And these kids understand, I think we all understand, it's as difficult as it is magnificent. And many years ago, when I was steeped in mothering in my own home, I was supposed to teach a poem that was so saccharine sweet about how mother loves me, and I love mother, we, everything is wonderful, and we have a happy family. I couldn't even teach it, so I had to adapt it. And it's worked ever since. And this is what we're sharing with you, a true Mother's Day poem, and then a special gift for some place to go to find relief from all the stra stress of mothering.
That concludes our service for today. <laughs> I don't think there's anything we could do that would outdo that in its message and beauty. Thank you. People of God has on every day, but it seems in our current days, we need a word of peace, that peace that surpasses all understanding that comes from the unconditional love of God, the Creator. We need that peace to flow from each and every one of us out into the world, to soften the hearts of those who don't understand what peace is, and to bring hope to those who desperately need it. I invite you this day to start out with a simple smile to everyone you meet. And may I wish you on this day, Shanti, Salam, Shalom, Peace be with each and every one of you. And don't forget to smile. Friends, this is our time during worship where we lift up the announcements that we feel we need to add that aren't in your bulletin. And there are some stuff coming up in your bulletin that you need to be aware of. Um, some of the things that aren't in your bulletin, Katie, do you want to talk about in two weeks? Good morning. So a couple weeks ago, I invited you all to come join us for Common Cathedral, and I haven't had any other takers. So right now, me and Michelle are going to have a good time, the two of us, bringing all that food in. But we also need people. I will send out a donation list um, sometime this week. But we will be here before church to make sandwiches and pack the bag lunches, and then we'll head into Boston. And the real experience of Common Cathedral is going into the city to really be there to worship and worship with the community. Would you agree, Derek? Yeah, to worship with the homeless. It's a different experience, it, you know, for a Sunday morning, but um, I just wanted to extend that invite again and look, be on the lookout for a donation list. Thank you. Yeah, if you haven't done this before, I invite you to join us. I usually sneak in right after church and get there just in time for worship, but after the sandwiches are gone. Dan, did you have something you wanted to share today? No? Oh, okay. Well, we'll wait then. <laughs> Are there any other announcements that we need to lift up? Some up and coming things that you may want to have on the horizon this year, for the first time in three years, North Shore Pride will be having their parade, and we have always taken part in that. They also have a ecumenical or interfaith pride worship service, and I've been privileged to be able to take part in that too over the last 10 years. It's on, I believe, the 25th of June, if that's a Saturday. Um, but I invite you to join us. It's not that long of a walk. There's tons of people, it's wonderful, and it does support one of our many ministries here, our open and affirming ministry, which LGBTQ rights and lifestyle is one of the many things that comes under ONA. So join us. In the last few years, there have been a few of us, so we've been able to coordinate our t-shirts. But. We'd rather have a bunch of people there wearing whatever you wish. You remember something?
You're welcome. Would you like to go? The kids are patiently looking at me. You guys want to come forward and you know what to say? And if anybody wishes to join them. You guys remember what to say? Ready? Right, ready? One, two, three. Jay, do you have a mission moment for us? Good morning. At Rockport Special Town Meeting on May 16, uh, which is a Monday, voters have a real opportunity to encourage inclusivity in our town. Among the warrants to be voted on are changes to zoning bylaws that allow for multi-family zoning district within a half mile of the train station this increases options for affordable housing for families with children and complies with the Massachusetts, the new Massachusetts Housing Choice Law, which facilitates affordable housing along the MBTA rail and bus lines. The Outreach Committee believes that Rockport should increase housing options, especially for families with children, which helps to fill Rockport schools and includes those who would otherwise be unable to afford housing in our town. At the same time, the proposed zoning bylaw contains design requirements that comport with the low-rise historic character of the town. Rockport has become a community for well-to-do elderly white folks. We favor a community that includes all of us, including children, regardless of color, regardless of income. There is much misinformation about this vote, yet I hope everyone who has interest in our town's future researches the facts, which are available on the town website and also at mass.gov slash housing choice legislation, and then attends the town meeting on Monday, May 16. We also hope that after researching the question, people will talk to others about it. With this affirmative vote, we can be the church, share our earthly resources, care for the poor, and fight for the powerless all at the same time. An update from Af uh, allies for our Afghan allies here on Cape Inn. We're working hard to assist our refugee clients who need much medical and educational assistance this week, we welcomed a new Afghani client who arrived. Now we support an Afghan family of four in one apartment, and then three Afghan individuals in another. We have a GoFundMe page for donations. We are evaluating the children and helping them, their mother, and others learn a new language. Our other refugee initiative, Refugee Immigration Ministry, has accepted a new client family a Haitian couple with a child who sought asylum here after fleeing political oppression. We seek a two-bedroom apartment close to a rail line, and we are gathering furniture for their apartment. If you want to donate items for the apartment, you can see the sign-up sheet for that at the end of uh, uh, the sanctuary uh, uh, to the left as you leave the, the room. I can also send you a link to a Google spreadsheet you can email me at rkptread at verizon.net. Thanks. Thank you, Jay. There's so many initiatives that we can get involved with, and if you are interested, let Jay or Wendy or anybody else on the Outreach Committee know. There's not a lack of work, but a lack of people. Dan.
Our scripture reading this Sunday is Psalm 23, and I'm reciting it from the Inclusive Bible, a Psalm of David. God, you are my shepherd, I want nothing more. You lie me down in green meadows. You lead me beside restful waters. You refresh my soul. You guide me to lush pastures for the sake of your name. Even if I'm surrounded by the shadows of death, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they give me courage. You spread a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In your night, my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in your house, God, for days without end. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Dan, for sharing those beautiful words of God with us. People of God, would you join me in prayer? Gracious and holy God, this morning I ask you to move the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts by your love and help each of us this day not to be the instrument of our own or anyone else's oppression, but to find ways to be an instrument of peace in every step, in every breath, in every moment of our lives. Amen. Psalm 23, probably one of the best known pieces of scripture there is. And truthfully, lots of pastors do not preach about it because it's not easy. But I don't really preach, so it's okay. But Psalm 23 is this beautiful psalm talking about the shepherd that provides everything for us. God, the shepherd, gives us everything we need. We do not want for anything. For me, that's probably the biggest part of that psalm. It also shows God's unending love for all creation and all humanity. By even saying that God will be there in the toughest times, walking through the valley of the shadow of death, walking through the dark places, will prepare a table before us in view of our enemies, bringing peace and reconciliation, is how I hear that, and giving us a place to dwell our whole life through. So why would I choose this on a day where we, in the secular world, celebrate Mother's Day? It's a good question. I'm still asking myself that right now. But I've been always moved by these two theologians that I read quite often. And one of them is Walter Brueggemann, and I came across this quite a while ago. But Walter Brueggemann suggests that Psalm 23 has maternal qualities. God turns situations of fear around into situations of joy. The metaphor of the caring shepherd goes beyond hurting or even leading to tender, life-giving care. God does everything that must be done so that the trusting sheep may live and thrive. And one of my favorite pieces is by Meister Eckhart, who was a 13th century philosopher and theologian and mystic. He was also a German Dominican monk. And he talks about this, and I want you all to listen. We are all meant to be mothers of God. What good is it to me if this eternal birth of the divine Son takes place unceasingly but does not take place within myself? And what good is it 
To me, if Mary is full of grace, if I'm not also full of grace. And what good is it to me if the Creator to give birth to his Son, if I do not also give birth to him in my time, in my culture, over and over again? When we do this, in the fullness of time, the Son of Man, the Christ, will be gotten in each and every one of us. All of these scriptures, all of what I just read from those two theologians, point out the mothering aspect of God. Now, I know a lot of us grew up with the King James Bible, and you would not hear that much. The language is more male-dominated. I chose the particular um, Bible that Dan read from today because it's called the Inclusive Bible. They work very hard not to use male-dominated language. And you hear, for me, something a bit more beautiful. The expansiveness of God. God can be both mother and father, as well as God being the creator, the redeemer, and the Holy Spirit. They aren't easy things to grapple with. But I'll share, you a, share with you a short story. It takes place in Central America. I don't think it matters which country. I don't know. It was passed on to me by someone else. And it takes place in a time when out in the countryside of whatever country it was, there was not a lot of health care. It was a very poor country. I think one of the poorest countries in our hemisphere at that time. It's a story of a friend of mine who went on a medical mission. And every day or every week, they went way out and they did clinics. And one day at the clinic they were doing, someone carried in a young girl who was probably, he said, 11 or 12. Her leg was all wrapped up. And before he unwrapped it, he could smell gangrene. And he unwrapped her leg and he saw that she had what some people would say looked like leprosy. It was all called, it's actually less maniacious, if I get that right, probably didn't. Mountain leprosy. And it had started to eat away at her skin, and because of infection and whatnot, some of it had turned gangrenous. They had nothing to give this girl to ease the pain. But it turns out she brought that with her. She brought her brother, who was two years younger than her. And her brother held her hand while her leg was scrubbed, while all the gangrenous parts of tissue were removed, while they washed her whole leg, while they wrapped it, while they gave her an antibiotic through an IV. Her brother held her hand, mopped her brow, sang to her, and she sang with him. Her brother was acting in a very motherly way, according to my friend. But that's not the end of the story. The next day, she came back to have her wound looked at and redressed, and it was doing quite well. And then for the rest of the day, while this clinic was going on for about 17 to 20 hours, this young girl, and her brother stayed at the clinic. And they walked around to each of the people doing whatever they were doing, to the different doctors, including my friend, to the nurses that were doing things, to the people that were keeping everybody in line and making sure that they kept records of everything. Because some of these people had never experienced what they were experiencing at that point. And that girl and her brother would sit and put their hands on the shoulders of the practitioners or hold the hands of the people that were being cared for. They did that all day long. And this girl could only hop around because she wasn't supposed to put any weight on her foot. And there was no crutches. The point of my story is every time I think of 
Psalm 23, and I think of God as a mother. I realize that in our lives, we are mothered by different people in different ways throughout our lives. And that the chance to be a mother to others in every way that it is, and for all you who are mothers, whether to your own children, whether to youth or others in your community, today we lift you up. And we lift up the example that you show to each of us how to care and mother for others. For me, it's those two kids. Now, my friend went back two years ago. This young girl was 30. She still had scars on her leg. She was single. And her and her brother had 13 orphans living with them. They hadn't gotten married because they were giving back to their community. She was a true mother in all aspects. And he was too at times, and other times a father, and sometimes she played that role too. May we be blessed by these examples of our mother in God. Friends in Christ, this is our time during our worship where we lift up those individuals and issues that we feel we need to pray for as well as celebrating with joy the thanksgivings in our lives. As you know, every week on Friday we have a prayer service where usually about eight to ten or more of us get together through Zoom and pray for different issues and individuals. 
So the people on our prayer list, which continue to get pretty long, are prayed for every week, more than once. Today, before I read this prayer for Mother's Day, I want us to take a moment where you have an opportunity to either say aloud or in your heart, someone in your life, lift up your mother, lift up yourself, lift up those who are still with us and those that have gone before us. Lift up Nancy and Marcia. Amen. Loving God, on this day set aside to honor and remember mothers, we give you thanks for all mothers. We thank you for the women who raised us, who are our mothers in childhood, whether birth mom, adopted mom, older sister, aunt, grandmother, stepmother. We thank you for the gift of those women within our community have, who have mothered us all, who have held us when we needed it, who have fed us, cared for us, read to us, listened to us, and helped to raise us within a beloved community. We pray that our lives may reflect the love they showed us and that they would be pleased to be called our moms, whoever and wherever they are. Amen. I invite you now to join me in the Lord's Prayer as it is printed in your bulletin, and today we are using the Lord's Prayer from the New Zealand Prayer Book. If you'll join me as we are bold to say together, eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the earth. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love now and forever. Amen. <laughs> People of God, this is our time together in our worship where we have the opportunity to give back from all we've been blessed with by God to all the varied ministries of this church. Jay shared with us three of them. That's a small amount for the amount of work that this church does, small number of what we do. The offering will now be taken.
Holy God, we lay these gifts before you that come from our heart. On this day, we dedicate them and hope you find the greatest need wherever mothers are in the world who need a little bit more hope, a little bit more help. Amen. I invite you now to open your hymnals to hymn number 11, Bring Many Names, and we will sing verses 1, 2, and 6. You may be seated. Before I give you the benediction, you may have noticed me once in a while looking at my computer up there. In an effort to help make those who join us live streaming feel a little more connected and interacting with us, we have started doing that this Sunday. And I bring you greetings from Jeff and Celine, from Fred and Dorothy, and from Beverly. And we thank you for chiming in. People of God, let us go forth knowing that we are led by God, that we are sheltered by God, that God never leaves nor forsakes us even in the bleakest valley. In God may we hunger and thirst no more, and may a peace that surpasses all understanding abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.